Seven-time NASCAR Cup Series champion is set to return to NASCAR, not as a full-time driver but as a part-time owner. Here we are talking about Jimmy Johnson, but what does that mean? Want to know about it? Then watch the video until the end. Jimmy Johnson will be a full-time driver in NASCAR again next season. He will also be a part owner. Johnson made the announcement that he has made an investment in Petty GMS Racing and that he will run certain events as part of what he hopes will be an overall program of 8 to 10 races that may also include an occasional Indy car or sports car race. The 47-year-old seven-time cup champion, who has spent the majority of the past two years competing primarily in IndyCar and has won 83 races over the course of 20 years of NASCAR racing, has committed to attempting to qualify for the Daytona 500 the following year, while the remainder of his NASCAR schedule is still up in the air. And if you find our video interesting, then do subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Johnson's 687th NASCAR Cup Series start will be his first in a non-Hendrick car. He has driven the number 48 Chevrolet for his entire career. Richard Petty, who has won seven races and is in the NASCAR Hall of Fame, has said this partnership to be an exciting time for Petty GMS. They have done a lot together with Maury this year, and adding Jimmy will only help keep us growing. Jimmy, who has won seven races, will be a great addition to the team because of his skills on and off the track. Petty is looking forward to having him on our team and seeing what they can build together. While Rick Hendrick, the owner of Johnson's team, says it is a great day for the sport, Jimmy Johnson is one of the best race car drivers of all time, and Rick is sure Johnson takes the same approach to run his own team. When he sets his mind on something, he works harder and with more dedication than anyone else. At the Daytona 500, a lot of people will be very excited to see Jimmy in a fire suit with his name on the roof of a Chevrolet. It will be different and a big challenge to race against him, but they are glad to see him back in NASCAR and look forward to the next chapter of a truly amazing career. So how did this deal come together? Johnson's agency is also the representative for Petty GMS driver Eric Jones. He acted as a conduit between Johnson and Petty GMS's main owner, Maury Gallagher, the owner of Allegiant Airlines, who affirmed that he is still the organization's principal owner. Johnson shared his views that he has always thought that people helped him get to this point by contributing to him that he should give back. So now, in the grand scheme of things, he will have that opportunity to be challenged to do so. He is really thrilled to share when he can and how he can, and he doesn't think that he has all the answers. And he still has a lot to learn, particularly with this new role. One facet of the sport is familiar to him, but there are many others that he has yet to master. And his aim is to relax, pay attention, make mental notes from these two experts, and assist in any way that he is able. Beyond simply serving as a mentor to full-time drivers Jones and Noah Gregson, Johnson's role in the team will expand. For example, Petty Grand Prix Operations is currently in discussions for a technical partnership with Hendrick Motorsports and Richard Childress Racing for the upcoming season. Such a partnership would entail the leasing of engines. It presently has a partnership with RCR, but the fact that Johnson has driven for Hendrick in the past presents an opportunity for the company to strike a deal with the organization. If Johnson can help, it's part of his involvement with this team, whether it's through a technical alliance, improving a relationship with a manufacturer, helping bring new employees into the shop because he is there, new partners that he can potentially bring in. Gallagher has said that he is not opposed to the idea of including Johnson's name in the team's name. Gallagher stated that their company would investigate the possibility of purchasing the name rights. There should certainly be some reference to the seven-time champion somewhere in the name. We just did not have enough time to do all of that work. This contract was finalized within the past month, and as a result, several aspects, including the name of the team, Johnson's vehicle number, and Johnson's sponsors, are still up in the air. Regarding the issue of the team's name, Johnson stated that they'd figure out a solution. He has no idea what you're talking about. Being a stakeholder in the team is undoubtedly something to take into mind, and it is something that they are working on. Because everything has taken place so suddenly, they are unable to predict its outcome at this time. The car that Johnson will drive is a non-chartered car, which means that for him to compete in any of the four races that he enters, he will have to earn one of the vacant spots. The Daytona 500 is expected to be the most challenging of these races. Petty GMS does not intend to enter that car in any additional races in addition to those held by Johnson. But why a single win on his return to NASCAR would mean a lot to the seven-time Cup Series winner? 
Jimmy Johnson is one of the best drivers in NASCAR history, but his place on the list of all-time wins could change again in a way that might surprise you. Johnson is back in NASCAR after a 23-year career that began in the Xfinity Series when he was just 22 years old. After two full-time seasons in the Xfinity Series, where he won the only race at Chicago Speedway in 2001, Johnson joined Hendrick Motorsports to run the full 2022 Cup Series schedule and compete for the Rookie of the Year award. He finished fifth in the point standings after winning three races and four pole awards, but Ryan Newman beat him in the rookie standings, which were calculated differently at the time by NASCAR than the regular driver point standings. Johnson didn't finish lower than sixth in the point standings for the next 12 years, which included his first six championships. In each of those years, he also won at least two races and led more than 1,000 laps eight times. It was one of the most dominant performances in any era of the sport, maybe even since Richard Petty's incredible two-decade heyday from 1960 to 1980, when he never finished lower than sixth in the point standings and won all seven of his series titles. Johnson won his last championship in 2016, and he won three races in 2017, but that was pretty much it for him. In the last three years as a full-time driver, he never won a race and never got higher than 14th in the point standings. Johnson stopped racing full-time in NASCAR after the 2020 season. The next year, he became a part-time driver in the NTT IndyCar Series. This past season, he did that experiment full-time, but in 19 races over the two years, he only finished in the top 10 twice. Now that Johnson is back in the series where he became famous, he has a chance to join other famous drivers on the list of all-time Cup Series winners. Now, people in the sport, especially Allison, have been arguing for a long time about whether or not Allison and Waltrip really tied. He says he should have one more win than Waltrip because he won a Cup Series race at Bowman Gray Stadium in 1971, but NASCAR officials didn't count it because of the type of car he drove. Johnson has been one win behind the two Hall of Famers since his win at Dover Motor Speedway in June 2017 turned out to be his last win, at least until now. Johnson hasn't decided which NASCAR races he will run in next season other than the Daytona 500, which could be one of his best chances to win the 84th race of his Hall of Fame-worthy career. Some people might be surprised to see a 47-year-old driver come out of part-time retirement and win the biggest race of the year right away but Johnson has done the seemingly impossible many times before. He still has the record for the longest championship streak in the history of the sport with five in a row from 2006 to 2010 on his way to the 2007 championship. He became the 12th driver to win at least four races in a row. He has won the most races at Dover, Martinsville, Charlotte, and Texas. Johnson's age is getting close to the number that was on the side of his car when he won all those championships. If this is the case, his comeback might just be a trip down memory lane. Still, Petty GMS had cars that were competitive for most of the 2022 season. Eric Jones won the first race for the team at Darlington Raceway in September. As the news that Johnson will return to NASCAR sinks in, it will become clear that he still has a chance to make more history in the sport, especially if he has a fast car for Speed Weeks at Daytona International Speedway in February. What are your thoughts regarding this? tell us in the comments section below. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed it. So don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more of our videos on NASCAR updates.